how do you how do you feel about abortion? I believe every woman should have the choice, no matter what the situation, no matter anything. Yeah, you're kind of uh, making me think different, man. Yeah. So would you say you just changed your mind then about abortion? Yeah. Yeah, I really did. Absolutely. Why you doing me like that, bro? I'm gonna give you a scenario, all right? All right. So imagine if you were uh, the eyewitness to a crime. It's a bank robbery. It was a guy who robbed a bank. You know who the guy is, you're not close friends. Okay. But he took the money and instead of keeping the money for himself, he donated it to an orphanage, okay. right? So he provided life-saving medicine, clothes, shelter, food for the orphans. Now your dilemma is this. Do I turn the guy in where he has to give the money back because it's not his money or do I let him keep the money and allow the kids to really survive? Did he give me any? No. Just <laughs> what do you think? Uh, allow the orphans to keep their money. I wouldn't turn him in. You wouldn't? No. All right. Now, why is that? Sounds like you have a high value for children. There, I, I have that moral Not standard. Not that, so but what you said, there. there is no snitch in either of us. Yeah, I mean, it's for a good cause, I guess, you know? I don't know how many people are really donating, so you could consider it a blessing in disguise, I guess. It's it's the moral high ground. Okay. You got to take the moral high ground. Um, how do you how do you feel about abortion? Honestly, I feel that if you're one of those kids who just likes to open your legs all the time, and then think, oh, I'll just get an abortion, everything's good. I think you're a person, human being, and I don't think you should you deserve. You should have been abor aborted in my book. I'm for it. Okay. Yeah. I believe every woman should have the choice, no matter what the situation, no matter anything. You think you, you think that a 15-year-old yes. girl who just wants to open her legs all the time, sure. okay? Every woman should have okay. her own choice to her own body. So would you ever be the driver in a drive-by shooting? There's a price for everything, man. <laughs> I don't know. Not on purpose. If we go in to kill somebody that I know killed my mom or something like that, then sure. If it's a revenge or something, but uh, yeah, I guess it depends on this. <laughs> situation you know How do I answer? have you ever been a driver in a drive no I have okay. not but no I have not <laughs> would, you, would you ever drive somebody who was pregnant to go get an abortion yes I would okay. so is, do you believe it's a baby in the womb at a certain point yes but yes I do yeah, all right. you know it depends on the stage you know early on I don't think so personally but but it's a woman's right to choose, yeah. right? Whatever the women want to do with their bodies. She can do whatever she wants. Right. Do you think a woman who has been raped should be able to murder the child in her tummy if she wants to do that because the child's a product of rape? Yes. Yeah. How about if the child is now 15 years old, still a product of rape, should the mom be able to murder her 15-year-old? Jeez, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, I know. That's such a contradiction. I know you're trying to get me there. No, of course not. Why not? Because he's already been alive for 15 years. What if the mother was raped? This is a very difficult question to maneuver through. And that's not to say because the question is a hard one, but rather it's an emotional one. The answer is actually really simple. If you've been in the pro-life movement for any amount of time, you recognize that these questions that are asked are the same questions that are being raised. But it's an emotional question. And when they raise this question, it could be because they wanna see if you have a heartbeat, not if the child has a heartbeat. They may concede to the fact that it's a human being, but this child has been conceived in rape. I'm curious, why are you raising the extreme objection of rape and incest? Because those only account for 1% of the reasons why somebody has an abortion. Are you willing to outlaw abortion in the remaining 99% of the reasons why somebody gets pregnant? If not, well then why not? Why bring up the subject? So it's a smoke screen and people aren't typically interested in the answer. What would you say is the difference between say a baby in the womb or a baby outside the womb? Oh uh, man. So why, why are we against a woman murdering her 15 year old child, but not murdering the child in the womb? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just, no, I don't, I couldn't really give you a great reason for that. In my opinion, a 15 year old has had time to live and to think and to be taught things and so is that it well so if somebody's in a coma can i can i destroy them because they can no longer think 
Well, if they're in a vegetative state and that's what they they wrote down that they want done, then yeah. What if, what if they said they didn't? What, what if they're asleep? What if, what, what if they're asleep? Can I kill someone if they're in a sleep, which is a semi-vegetative state? No. Why question, not? Question, you can't because, feel pain. Did they ask? Did they say if I ever get into the no. state? No. Either has the child in the womb. Yeah, that's no. true. That's okay. true. Oh, so, I get where you're coming from. Rape and incest are less than 1% of all the pregnancies out there. If the child's continually developing, right? How old are you, how old are you again? 29. 29. All right. So I read an article in Harvard. It says that your brain is still developing until you're 45 years old. Okay. So we're always developing. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, a six-year-old female cannot, uh, she may be able to have sex, as crazy and as weird as that is, but she can't get birth. Mm -hmm. Right? She doesn't have everything in place in right. order to do that. So she's still developing. Why can we kill a six-month-old in the womb, but not a six-year-old outside of the womb? I don't know. You got me there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how to respond. <laughs> um, I got nothing. Rape is a horrible tragedy. But I have to ask myself, is it ever acceptable to punish a child for the crime of the father? What civilized society would put to death a child because the father is guilty? We don't even do that with the rapists. Why are we doing that with an innocent human being conceived in such a way? We don't add tragedy to tragedy. We want to bring triumph. Next, ask yourself the question, can I kill a human being that has been conceived in rape after they've been born? Say they're four or five years old. We say, well, no, the child's already in the world. Well, so is the baby in the womb. They're already in the world. They're just in a different location, right? An astronaut doesn't cease to be an astronaut because they're in outer space. No, they're still a human being, a distinct and a unique individual created in the image of God. The safest place should be a mother's womb. Consider for just a moment as well that when you say that a person conceived in rape should be put to death, then that is very telling of how you feel about rape survivors when you see them out on the street. I don't think you should be able to get an abortion like after a certain point. After the heartbeat? Uh, maybe three or four months, but once it starts forming, then yeah, I do. Well, it forms from day one. It's forming. <laughs> yeah, day one. It forms from day one. I, I don't it's know. It's developing from day one. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how to explain this. Let me give you a scenario. Imagine that there's a girl, right? She's hot, she's a 10, she's ready and willing to uh, get together with you. The one caveat is this, that when you're done, shortly thereafter, she gets access to kill one of your family members. But she's a sure thing. Would you get together with her? No. <laughs> Almost laughable, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> why, why is that? Uh, sex doesn't prevail over my family. <laughs> so let's, let's go back to the idea of the abortion, right? You get together with a girl, and she gets to now choose to kill one of your family members, your child. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> so we, we talk about a woman's choice. Okay. All right. Let, let, me, let me reason with this for just a moment. Okay. Should a woman be able to uh, take illegal drugs if she wants to take because it's her body? Absolutely. Should a woman be able to prostitute her body because it's her body? For sure. Yeah. Do you think two 13-year-olds should be able to engage in consensual sex? No. Mm. Her body, her choice. She's not 18 yet. She's not old enough to make those adult decisions yet. In All right. My opinion. Think about this then. A 13-year-old cannot go inside of uh, the nurse's office at her junior high school and get a Tylenol without parental consent. She can't see a rated R movie. She can't get makeup that's tattooed. She can't get a tattoo. But she can go inside of a Planned Parenthood and get an abortion if she's 13 years that's old. That's true. Yeah. That's an adult decision. I was yeah, hardcore she too. Able, yeah. Uh, I, I take back what I said. If we found bacteria in outer space, like on Mars, we would say there's life in outer space. Or if we wanted to see if somebody is alive down here, we check their pulse or we check to see if they have a heartbeat, right? Would it make sense then to go back to the idea of if the baby in the womb has a heartbeat, then isn't it alive, a human being? Yeah, I mean, it would make sense then, yeah. yeah. My position would be that abortion is wrong in all situations, right? If we found out that a child was deformed in the tummy, as hard as that would be, I don't think we should 
kill them. Just in the same way, if I see someone in a wheelchair, I don't think I should go up and like right. kill that somebody in a wheelchair. Right. Yeah. We give them preferential treatment. Give me a scenario where abortion is the best option. The best scenario would, of course, be if she was raped and she got pregnant. Can and she doesn't a, want to keep the, the child. Do you think of a scenario know. where we would ever punish a child for the crime of the father? No, never. So, Isn't that what we're doing when somebody is... Yeah, I can see it from that perspective. You're kind of snuffing out their own life because we they were... The yeah. Give me another scenario where it should be up to the woman. Because I think that a woman should be able to drink alcohol if she's of age, if she's mature. Wow. Should she be able to drink alcohol and drive? No. Why not? Because that endangers other people. If it could harm somebody else, an abortion would be the ultimate harm. Yeah, see, you're, it's a catch-22. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to respond to that because I still think it should be a... <laughs> so what is it ultimately down to then, right? If we could answer all of these questions, yeah. you believe it's a baby in the womb. Do you think we should be able to go around just killing people at random? No. We say it's her body, but is it her body or is it inside of her body? Side of her body and so it's a separate body yeah that's true right. different dna it's not like he can speak yet do you think the world is overpopulated it already is absolutely but so every day it's getting more and more overpopulated maybe we should kill the elderly who've already lived their lives and allow the kids to live no i don't i don't believe that I'm good. No. let's come up with something else i because i can't think of a really good reason if it's her body the more, yeah the more that i hear you talk the more that it I mean, he's been telling me for years, you know, you're, you're thinking about abortion is definitely backwards, you know? And the more I hear you talk about it, the more I'm like, oh, f you know, you kind of got me there. <laughs> so did you just change your mind about abortion then? Yeah. So answer this question for me, Phil. It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when? Honestly, I hate abortion. My, Why though? Is there something wrong with it? My, my ex fiance and I, we, uh, we actually had abortion. Um, uh, we, it was really early, but um, what we did do that, and I will regret it to the day I die. Why do you, yeah, I mean, these are kind of sticky situations. We don't really think about it. We just kind of go through life making decisions, and we don't know. I mean, are there right decisions? Are there wrong decisions yeah. in life? I guess not. There's two sides to everything. Oh, that's an interesting question. That's a good way to look at it. Just having this conversation, you're changing my mind on abortion law. I've never really, like, had this conversation with anybody else besides my husband, really. Yeah, you're kind of uh, making me think different, man. Yeah, so would you say you just changed your mind then about abortion? Yeah. Yeah, I really did. Absolutely. It's a human being. It's a human life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think that all people have intrinsic value and worth and that nobody's better than the next person. And that we need to treat each other with respect and dignity. But I would say that life is valuable because God says that life is valuable. When the subject of abortion is brought up out on the street, people are naturally thinking about spiritual things, about life and death. I want to talk to people about their spiritual condition before a holy God. I'm going to move from your intellect into your conscience, right, for just a moment. Do you think you can handle that? Go for another two minutes, see, yeah. see what happens. Yeah. Right. Have you ever heard of the Ten Commandments? Yes. Can you name any of them? Name two of them? Uh, let's see. Uh, shall not kill, shall not steal, don't cover your neighbor's wife. We've all broken God's law. We've lied. We've taken things that belongs to somebody else. That's stealing. That's We're all sinners. Yeah. So we're all in need of help. What did God do to make a way for Phil to get to heaven. You ever thought about that? No, I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> that Jesus paid the ultimate price on the cross 2,000 years ago, and whoever will turn from their sins and place their faith in him will be given a free gift, which is a different type of life. It's eternal life. And so what he requires of all people everywhere, big ugly word here, is to repent. That means to change your mind. It means to agree with God. All right, you're right. Okay, you are right. I can't make it to heaven on my own. And you must now place your trust in Christ. And the reason I know that God will forgive people is because three days after Jesus died, he rose again from the grave and he defeated death. Does any of this at all, Phil, make sense? Does your brain... 
it, it makes sense. <laughs> Would you give this some thought, what we talked about? I've really enjoyed our conversation, actually. Honestly, yeah, me too. I mean, you totally changed my mind on abortion. Would you at least give this some thought, things that we talked about here today? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the time. It was, it was good to talk to you because yeah. now I have a whole new perspective. Yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you. It's an all new season of Way of the Master. What's your name? Lovey. Lovey? I can't call you Lovey. I'm a married man. Now, is there an afterlife? What do you think? You don't want to force your faith on somebody, but at the same time, it's healthy and good to explore yeah, yeah, yeah. the truth, it, it right? Do you think ultimately sin is wrong because it violates the standards of a holy God? Yes. I'm a good person. I'm going to give you a moral speedometer to judge if you've broken God's law or not. I've never read the Bible ever. My it's dad told me to, that's the next thing I need to do. It's the world's biggest selling book of all time. You should be educated on what it says. You know what it says? It says that you're an idiot if you follow it. You're a sheep. Nah. No, it yes, doesn't. that's what it says. It Sorry. says you're a sheep if you don't. You're a lost sheep if no, you're going astray. No, You don't have to go to hell for all eternity. So God has commissioned us to share the gospel. That's the good news. But we have to remember the role of the Holy Spirit, right? The role of the Holy Spirit is to convict and to convert. You're smiling. Why are you smiling? Well, because what you said um, makes sense. But when you hear this, Pat, is this doing something in your heart and mind? Is this kind of becoming personal it's, for you? It's freeing my soul. Join us for the new season of Way of the Master. Visit wayofthemaster.com.